I think probably twofold. I mean, the biggest change is uh, the intensity with, within which the sort of urban world, you know, you and I, all of us sort of live within, cars we drive, the houses, the space we take up. I mean, it, it just takes up more space makes more pollution, puts more pressure on the, on, the, on the planet, puts more pressure on Shropshire, that's had a big impact. And undoubtedly the, the, the way agriculture has gone over the last 30 odd years has, has planted a big heavy footprint on, on, on the wildlife of the county. I'm not sure about my crowning achievement. I think it's it's more to do with, with the trust, the wildlife trust itself. I think it's become a sort of major uh, force to be reckoned with in terms of way the way the environment in Shropshire and across the UK can be sort of managed into the future to sort of adopt sort of new practices, engage more people, um, make it more mainstream, wildlife more mainstream in everybody's lives. And I think the way some of the big schemes and projects we've done in Shropshire have helped to do that, whether it be on the sniper stands, on the rivers, uh, on, on, the, on the bogs of uh, fens of, of mosses of North Shropshire, they've all begun to put a really big sort of footprint, positive footprint this time, down in the direction of wildlife. Oof, probably the, um, the, the sort of hustle and bustle, I mean there's always loads of stuff going on, loads of challenges, loads of opportunity, um, though I'd like to think there'll be a fair amount of that uh, going forward in life. I think to carry on the momentum that the trust movement and indeed all the other environmental organisations in the country are doing, we've got to th be bolder, you know, we've, we, at the moment we're, we're banding around the phrase the third more wildlife, well it, you know here in Shropshire, which is what we're talking about today, you know Shropshire Wildlife Trust needs to grab some really big initiative, and here we are in Holly Banks for example, you know this, this, is, this is a reserve of 50, 60 odd acres, it needs to be a reserve of 600 acres uh, and, if, and if it got that right it would help some, some of the flooding issues in Shrewsbury and it would also be an amazing place, even more amazing for whooper swans from Greenland, teal coming in over the winter, red starts in the summer and so on. Um, so yeah, more of that, more big stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, it can be really boring, but it's very difficult to stray too far away from uh, Sir David Attenborough, a really impressive man, and he's, he's been, we've been very privileged to have him visit Shropshire Wildlife Trust on at least three occasions since, since, since I've been here. Um, but I think more recently, I mean, I would add to that some of the amazing young people that we've, we, we, we've been working with over the last couple of years. Um, we did something with, local, with a local MP recently, and they absolutely grilled him in a very polite and professional manner about HS2 in this instance. And the facts they had to the, on their fingertips was so impressive, so much so they said uh, one, of the, one of the lads was invited to come along and advise um, Philip Dunn, in fact, who's the chair of the Environmental Audit Committee, advise him on some of the, the matters around HS2 in this instance. So the youngsters... The youngsters, that's a bit patronising. The young people of today are my heroes because they're going to have to be uh, going forward over the next 20 or 30 years. Well, I've delayed it a bit because of the weird circumstances we're all in at the moment. Um, I had planned just to chill out a bit and then take stock. Um, but I'm most certainly going to uh, do environmental stuff. There's got to be some new environmental challenge to carry on the work. Hopefully, I've had some modicum of success in trying to pursue over the last 30, 40 years, in fact. Um, but I'm also going to climb a lot of mountains.